I'm preaching today and I do believe I have a word that will help you a lot. But I have to give you a disclaimer first. Kirk says I am the Karen Brady of Connect Church in that I can be harsh but fair, okay? (laughs) More saying I can be plain speaking, I can be direct. And I think today I need to be direct. So if this is your first time, please don't be horrified. You know, we're not always going to be talking about these things today, but I, I, you know, I have to today. Is that all right? Okay, so I want to give you an example of a time I was direct. And it was when I first started as a youth leader. When I was in my early 20s, I was a secondary school teacher. And in the afternoons, um, once a week, we would go to the home of, of some young people in our church and we would have a connect group. And we called it Meaty Bites. And I thought it was great because, like, they were going to learn about, you know, the Bible so they get a little bit to eat spiritually from the Bible, meaty bites. But it also was the name of dog food in Australia, okay? So I thought it worked on two levels for youth ministry. So um, when I was driving along the the street this week, I saw the poster of David and Goliath. Have you seen it? Okay, this is for later. Don't worry about this one right now, okay? We'll put put David and Goliath up here. All right, have you seen this ad? I love it. Okay, I just think it's hilarious. No, he did not drink Lucas Aid. It was the power of God that took the giant down. Okay, but what I like about this poster, hey, it's an opportunity to talk about the Bible because some people think the Bible is boring and irrelevant and it's not. And one day I was talking about David and Goliath to my meaty bite students, okay, and I I would get them to read out parts of the Bible as you do. And so I had asked one of the boys, Tim, to read out um, the the part from the Bible and he was a smarty pants, to put it nicely. And so he got to the part that said, where David speaks to Goliath and says, how dare you come against the God of Israel, you uncircumcised Gentile. He may have mixed up the T and the I when he read it out on purpose, I think. Think about it. Anyway, so he, he turns to me and says... What does uncircumcised mean? Like, I knew he knew what it meant, but he was testing his youth leader at this point, wasn't he? And I could just, you know, avoid the question, or I could blush, I could giggle, or I could stare him back and look at him in the eye and say, it means he still has a foreskin. He he didn't push it anymore. There were no more of those kind of questions after that because he was scared what he was going to get back in return, all right? Sometimes you just need to say it plain, don't you? And this passage that we've been looking at this month in Joshua 5 is one of those plain speaking passages. We have been talking about the book of Joshua all year, about how to be strong and courageous as you enter into the new season. And what interests me in uh, chapter 5 of this book is that actually sometimes you have to become weak in order to become strong. Okay, And that's what happened to the army of Israel at this time. They had to put themselves in a vulnerable, risky position in order to become the strong and courageous warriors who would take the country that God had for them to enter into it. And, you know, God wants us all to enter into his promise by faith. Not by our own strength, not by our own works, but by his power. So we have to trust him. We have to believe in him. And sometimes we have to put ourselves in a vulnerable position in order for him to then work through us. So we are not living out of our own resource. And when that happens, that seems like counterintuitive. It seems like opposite to how we operate in the, on this planet, doesn't it? And, you know, the reason why we need to learn to to follow God's advice is because he's a much better thinker than we are. Okay, the Bible tells us in Isaiah 55, in verses 8 to 9, about God, how God thinks. And he says this, My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. 
If you are going to keep relying on how you think, you won't enter into the promise God has for you. We have to start trusting that God can think better than we can and trust when he asks us to do certain things. And, you know, David, who took down Goliath, he was one of those. He trusted how God operated. And so he made himself vulnerable. He fought a Goliath without armor on. He just used his stones in his sling and he trusted that as he took action, as he stood up for God, that God would intervene. Okay? He knew God's ways were different than our ways. And, you know, he would go on to write many of the Psalms, many of the songs of worship that are recorded in the Bible. And he says this in Psalm 20. Some find their strength in their weapons and wisdom, but my miracle deliverance can never be won by men. Our boast is in the Lord our God who makes us strong and gives us victory. Okay, so he knew this from experience. He knew that when you put yourself in a risky place by faith, that God would come through and he would win the battle for you. And, you know, the country of Israel um, that is described in Joshua 5, they had seen God do miracles upon miracles for them as they did risky things as they put their foot in the water and the river dried up so the, all the people could cross. God had done many things by his power and he was going to do it again. So let's look at Joshua 5 and just see the risky, vulnerable position that this group of people have been put into. Now, Israel are good at winning battles. If anyone watched Eurovision last night, Israel won with a chicken song, okay? Trust me, they're still doing vulnerable, risky things, okay? <laughs> it was great. The, the vocals were incredible. Anyway, I, I must admit, I think I just watched Eurovision to hear what Graham Norton has to say. Talk about harsh but fair. Okay. He said about one country, he said, I've heard um, that some people like this song. I just haven't met any of them yet. So, you know, he's just great at that kind of thing. So... In Joshua 5, we read, Now when all the Amorite kings west of the Jordan and all the Canaanite kings along the coast heard how the Lord had dried up the Jordan, the river, before the Israelites until they had crossed over, their hearts melted in fear and they no longer had the courage to face the Israelites. So these were all the enemies, okay? They were scared by what God was doing, okay? So in this environment... God doesn't say, well, now go get them. They're vulnerable. Now he says to him, no, now you make yourselves vulnerable. Now you make yourselves weak. At that time, the Lord said to Joshua, make flint knives and circumcise the Israelites again. Mental note here. I don't think it's possible to do this operation twice. Okay, what God was actually saying was reinstitute the practice because it had stopped occurring amongst the Israelite men. So Joshua made flint knives. Apparently, they're very sharp. I did some research. Okay, can be as sharp as a surgeon's scalpel and circumcise the Israelites at Gibeah of Haraloth. Okay? Now, um, this was not babies. This was men. And this was in a time when there were no anaesthetics. Ouch. Okay? They had to be strong and courageous for this procedure, didn't they? For what was about to happen. It was a counterintuitive move, isn't it? It doesn't make sense for an invading army, once they get into the new country, to then physically maim every member of the army with a potentially unnecessary operation. I mean, you know, a circumcision isn't life and death normally, okay? But this is operating accord to, according to God's higher thinking. Okay, not according to human thinking. Okay, this is putting yourself in a risky position in order to say, God, I trust you in my weakness. Even though all the enemies are out there and they could come and get me while I'm recovering from this procedure, okay, I'm going to trust you anyway, God, because you are stronger. Now, what I find interesting about this passage, if you go back a screen, please, Abby is the name. You know what I said before? Some people think the Bible is boring. I say they've never read it. They've not read it properly because there are Easter eggs and gems everywhere. Take, for example, the names here. Gibeah of Haraloth. 
Now, the name we've been calling it is Gilgal. That's a nice name, rolled back. Okay, Gibeah Haraloff is a great name. Talk about harsh but fair. It means hill of foreskins. Literally. There were so many, it was a mountain. Okay, you walk by. Oh, look, there's a hill of foreskins. So, I know, I know, it's just gems everywhere. Okay, but what, what I... I also found when I did my research was this. It implies a change in someone's life that they are no longer like everybody else, but they are now special to God. Okay? And God wants to do a work in our lives so we're no longer like everyone else. We no longer operate like everybody else, but that we operate according to his ways, according to his patterns that indicate we belong to him. Okay, so Gibeah of Haraloff means two things. You can choose the meaning that you like the best. I'll go with special to God. So after the, their operation, the entire army, every man, okay, not women. Women don't need this procedure, just the men, okay. They had to be healed, okay. And it says this, they remained where they were in camp until they were healed. And I believe this is the biggest test of faith by the army. Wow. They just had to stay put. Wow. They, they couldn't defend themselves. They had to recover. <laughs> Isn't this a great picture? There is, there's this website called the Brick Testament, okay? And it's all Bible stories done in Lego. It's definitely not for kids. You should have seen the slide before this. It showed Gibeah Faraloff and it was big, okay? So... Um, <laughs> <laughs> the staff are a bit traumatised because I put some pictures on the WhatsApp group. So, um, so here you can see them recovering, okay? This takes faith to recover. And what I want to say today is, is some of you ha- are healing and now's not the time for you to fight. Now is the time for you to rest and trust that God will work it all out, that God will protect you against a hostile environment. Okay. The other thing I, you know, thought of when I saw this picture was, can you imagine the women at this time? Like, you know, speaking to their husbands or to their sons, you know, while the men are moaning and recovering. Because apparently it takes a couple of weeks to recover from as a grown person. Can you imagine the women? They're going, oh, please. I mean, you know, like what men are with man flu. So imagine this would be 20 times worse, if not more. (laughs) And the women there going, Really? Really? I gave birth to you. You think that's painful? I was in labour for like, you know, days and then they had to stitch me up, you know. No sympathy from the women. So the men only had to rely on God, okay, to be healed at that time. But, you know, the important thing in this is that not one man was left out. It was important that every single fighter in that army was marked for God. And, you know, every single person matters to God. It matters that everyone is marked for him. And, you know, today I want to transition. It is a slightly tenuous link. But I want to talk about how we all matter to God, okay? And I want to talk to you about a very practical way um, that we can um, make sure we are counted, okay, and that we can enter into what God has for us. So it's important that you know that God's heart is for everyone. God wants every single person to enter into his promise. And the good news now is that you don't need a right light circumcision to do that. Okay, it's very different. And Kirk explained that last Friday night. It's now about a change in our hearts. But God's heart is that for every single person, you know, to enter into his, his new season, into his new promise. And if you call Connect Church your home, that, you know, as we move into our building and the new season that's opening up there, that you will come and be in part of that. You matter to God. You are so important to him and you matter to us. And, and as a church community, we want to do our best to look after you. And we want to look after you in your vulnerability. Now, there is one area where we are all vulnerable nowadays, and I just want to take a little bit of a time out on it. And, you know, a lot of you would have been getting bits of paper about the GDPR, about updating your privacy regulations. Are you enjoying all the mail? Okay, yeah. Well, it affects every organisation, including churches. 
okay? Um, but I think it's a good thing because what it's doing is it's making sure we look after you, that we look after your important information because actually some bad people try and steal information, don't they, and abuse it. So we do have information about you, whether it's in our, about courses you've attended. We do have a lot of your addresses and your, your emails and giving information. It's important we keep all of that safe. And so um, we as a church need to also abide by these GDPR general data protection regulations as well, as does every organisation in the EU. And even after Brexit, we still have to abide by these rules. Now, the important thing for you to know is that you have rights. You have eight rights as an individual when it comes to your own personal inf information. Sorry, just going to give you this really quick, okay? Don't nap on me. The first right you have is the right to be informed, okay? You need to know about what information we have. You need to have the right to be able to access your information, and I'm going to talk about how you can do that. You have the right to reject automated decisions. So things like, you know, if you don't want to know about every event we've got on, you can choose not to receive emails and things on us. You have the right to correct information. If we have some information not right on you, you can fix it up. You have the right to be deleted. Now I'm going to put a little asterisk with that to a degree because as a church we have some um, special interests where even if you were saying, no, I don't want you to have any more information on me, because if you've maybe made donations, HMRC win over your right to be anonymous about your donations, okay, in terms of um, gift aid, okay, that's what I mean, all right, so if you've done gift aided donations, you can't be deleted. To restrict processing, you can change how much information we have on you. you to data portability, if you want to you know, if you move overseas and you want your information as a church we've had, you, that can go with you, and to stop processing. As a church, we are required, like I said, to look after you with respect to those rights. Now, for us, this isn't actually a huge adjustment because we've been using some really great software for a long time to help um, look after your information and to help look after you. And it's called Church Suite. And what I love about it is that the people have been working really hard to make sure it meets the requirements of these new laws as well. One of the other things I like about it is that you can access it from anything. You can access it from a smartphone, from a tablet, from a computer, lots of different ways. And you can interact with it. Now, last Friday, or Friday just gone, I sent an email to everyone whose email address we had and it has your invitation to access your information. And I've seen a lot of you have already gone on and made some changes. So well done you, give yourselves a hand. You're so clever. So we're now gonna do a live demonstration with it and I'm hoping this is gonna work. Like what could go wrong? All right, so I better move out of the way, hey? Oh, all right. So I'm just gonna talk here. So I'm not using a real person, I've, um, I've made a profile for Emmett from the Lego movie. Okay, so this is the email you would have received. If you didn't get it, it might be in your spam. Otherwise, um, just give us your email and we'll update it. So, you get the opportunity once you click the link to then register and then you create your very own password that only you know so you can access it. Now, I'm going to make Emmett, so you can all log into it, because he's not a real person, you can all change his details, okay? So, I'm creating his password at the moment. Okay, we're not... Now, do not save passwords. Don't trust Google or um, Cloud or whatever, never. Okay, you need to remember it, okay? Oh, except it didn't work. Come on. All right. Wild fire. Oh, wild style. Well, that's why it didn't work. Okay. Wild. I'm still going to call it wildfire. What? It's not now. What? No, no, no. It's because I don't have a number. Wildfire. One. Hey, there we go. See? Not now. The email's there. 
Yeah, that's the right email. Oh, thank you, everybody. All right. So, when you when you get into when you get into it, once you've set up a password that works, my advice: be patient. You get to this home page, okay, and it's got. You'll see warnings and things. Now, only you can see this information that you've put in and any of um, the staff who have and um, core team who have access to um, certain levels of, of the church database. But basically, this is your information. But the first thing you see at the top is some events coming up in um, Connect Church and then you can see your data. So let's look at Emmett's personal details and you can edit them. So remember I said one of your rights is for you to be able to access your data and make changes. So there's Emmett's name, Emmett Brukowski, his mail, his birthday. Oh, actually, they've got the wrong year. So let's change it to the right year. He was actually born in 1984. Okay, Emmett is single. Okay, so he's going to put that information. He really would love to be married to Wild Style, but it's not happening. Okay, and... His employer is Lord Business, but actually it's not Lord Business anymore because he is now just Mr. Business. He lost the Lord. But so now you can see, you can just enter the details and change it. So any person can do this. On the left-hand side, you can see any emails that have been sent or SMSs. Um, so if maybe some communication from the church ended up in your spam... You could see it here. You can see any events that you've signed up for. Now, Emmett has signed up for the Connect to Church lunch. That's why there's a tick there, which is on today after the service. So he's looking forward to the food um, <laughs> as well. You can see what groups he's signed up for. Yeah, you can go. He's signed up for the SHAPE course that's on a Thursday night. Okay, so he's attending that. He wants to find out if he really is a master builder. Um, and, and so on. So there's lots of different things you can do there. You can go to the Connect Church website as well from there and see what's going on. Now, the more, the more you do with it, the more, um, uh, the more value it has to you. Now, if you have children, you can click on it here. I didn't create any children for Emmett. But you can actually then, you are in charge of your children's information. We don't send this link out to un, over, sorry, under 18s. Okay, so only 18s and over get this information. So you make sure you update your children's information. If there's any medical information we need, you know, to know maybe they've just been diagnosed with a nut allergy. Well, that's something really important for the kids' team to know about. Okay, so you can put all the important information in. Um, you can actually manage your giving information as well through this. Um, so Emmett hadn't made any donations, but this person, Paul Nation, has... He goes to a different church, Nottingham. He actually is one of the developers of this software, and so these are examples from their training day. But you can go to the giving part of the software and see donations that you have made that you um, wanted us to know about, Okay. So there could be bank ones, but you can see the method of how it's gone in, how much. If you have a gift aid declaration in place, you can see how much gift aid was claimed on it. So um, it's very good information that way. You can even see your pledge that you made for always building this year and how much progress you've made so far on it. You can set up a new gift aid declaration. There's a lot it can do. You can even click on this button here and you can make a donation. Okay, using a debit card or a credit card or setting up a, a standing order. So there's a lot it can do. This church is doing a lot with it. They've got podcasts set up. They do their rostering through it, rotors. We use a different program for that. In the new building, we can use this to book rooms and resource. It's really a great piece of software and um, we love using it. But it's only ever as good as the information you give us. Now, another great thing about it, is that um, there is a, there's a, a part where we can all share details, search for others. So, you know, in the old days, you might have had a directory for a church. Well, you can be on a directory where other people can find your details and contact you. Now, we set the default that people can't see anything about you. It's your choice whether you want to be seen. 
So you might say, well, I'm happy for people to know my email address and they can contact me that way. Or I'm happy for them to know my address and my mobile number. You choose, okay? We don't make that choice for you. It's up to you how public you are on this, okay? Now, I'm sure there are many, many, many questions about this and I'm sure some of you are going, well, I don't use a computer or a smartphone. We can help you access your information. You can come to the info point at the end of the service and I'll be there and I can help get you um, set up with that for uh, you to see what's there. Or you might be going, I actually just don't want to be on it at all. Well, if you don't want to be on it at all, that's fine, but it just makes it really hard for us to look after you if we don't have your address. Because all of your information, your address, your phone numbers, all that have to go on this kind of system and be protected by it. Okay, so it is a safe system in terms of its security, okay. It's, it's just um, you get to manage how much information you have with it, okay. Now, if you're happy to, to be on it, we'd love to take your photo if you don't mind and then we can include your picture with it as well, okay. Um, but it's whatever levels you're happy with, okay. That's the important thing about it. So... Um, that's a little demonstration. It is. It's very good. It's very. Um, it's very well put together software, and they're making it better and better all the time. Okay, and we we can't do church without it. To be honest, okay, it's an important part of how we run. It's a new day, new wine. Okay, this is part of of the new season. So I want to just move on now from that you know yes you are vulnerable with your information but we are doing our best to look after you in that vulnerability okay and you know under these rules there are tough penalties for organizations that do not look after the information of their people and so there should be because this is a really important area of life okay and they're uh, you know, a safeguarding and due diligence needs to be given this. It is very important how we look after you and look after your information. But I want to just wrap up now by going back to an important concept in Joshua 5. And, and that is this. Just because everyone matters to God and we are protected by him doesn't mean that we will have a pain-free existence. Okay? And... I think this is a really important concept because these soldiers are in pain when they've trusted God, haven't they? They had to undergo a procedure that was painful. Like I said, there was no anaesthetic. And I think sometimes in our world we can become Christians and think, that's it, I shouldn't suffer ever again. Well, I don't see that being a pattern in the Bible. It's certainly not what Jesus experienced nor taught his followers. And I like this quote that I found by another preacher called Michael Lowe. He said this, So many Christians seek to live the pain-free Christian life. Such a life has no impact. If you want to enter into the new season of God that he has for you, you are going to experience some pain. Now, let me put a qualifier on it. That doesn't mean all pain is from God. Okay, there, some pain is from bad choices and from people doing wrong things okay but there is some pain that comes from God sometimes because he wants to remove the old so we can step into the new okay and you know for these soldiers we are told in Joshua 5 why they had to experience the pain and I won't read it all now but it's in verses 4 to 7 and it basically says they used to be circumcised when they're in Egypt they left Egypt and then they were walking through the wilderness for 40 years and during that time they stopped circumcising the, the men the, the boys and now they'd come into the new place and God was saying you can't live like you did in the wilderness any longer wilderness living is no good in the promised land okay and, you know, it's important for us to know the old ways we did things, they're not going to help us as we go into the new season. God needs to change us and that will involve some pain. It always does. But the old saying says this, no pain, no gain. We all know that, don't we? Okay, if we want to get healthier, we're going to have to do some exercise and there will be pain. I was sore last week after walking my 10Ks. Oh, I really enjoyed my soak in the bath afterwards. 
But what I want to say today is if you are running from the pain that you're experiencing, it could be that pain's from God, okay? And you need to allow it to work through in your life so you can move into the new season. Jesus told us that we no longer need to be circumcised, but he said that we still need to be cut. And he said this in John 15 to his followers, the disciples, and he's saying it to us now. He said, I am the real vine, like a grapevine, and my father is the farmer. He cuts off every branch of me that doesn't bear grapes. And every branch that is grape-bearing, he prunes back so it will bear even more. You are already pruned back by the message I have spoken. Live in me. Make your home in me just as I do in you. In the same way that a branch can't bear grapes by itself, but only by being joined to the vine, you can't bear fruit unless you are joined with me. And, you know, we believe here in Connect Church that we must all be in relationship with Jesus. That is the beginning of living the full, abundant life. But within that relationship, we also need to let God to allow to change us. And he's saying here, he will cut off the bad bits, okay? The parts that are dead wood in our lives, the parts that aren't bearing any fruit, he will remove. And that makes logical sense to us. Yeah, of course you get rid of the dead stuff on a plant. What doesn't make sense is the pruning back the bits that have been bearing fruit. He says here, And every branch that is grape-bearing, he prunes back so it will bear even more. Sometimes God wants to remove stuff in your life that is good. So it will be even better. And this is the part we struggle with. Because sometimes these things are, are things that are really important to us, have been a big part of our identity. And we're there going, but God, you used me so much while I was doing this thing for you. Or this, there was such blessing on it, God. Why do you want to get rid of it now? But this is where we need to trust him, that he wants us to be weak first, so we will trust him for him to be strong through us. One of the writers of the Bible, Paul said, I've learned that when I am weak... He is strong. And you know what? We don't want to be running off our own abilities or our own giftings, do we? We want to be filled by the power of God, filled by the new wine and ministering out of the anointing because it's God's power through us that will change us, that will change this world, that will change our community. Let's trust God and not our own abilities. And you know, I was, I've been reading this book for the last week or so now, by Bob Goff. It's called Everybody Always. I recommend you read both of his books, Love Does and this one. He was one of the speakers at the Colour Conference this year and he's hilarious but he's deep too with it. And uh, he said this about cutting away in our lives and uh, he learned to skydive. So he was talking about what he learned in skydiving classes and this is what he said. When you're getting your skydiving licence, most of the class isn't spent talking about what happens when things go right and the parachute opens correctly. Instead, they prepare you for what to do when it doesn't. That seemed like a good idea to me. One of the things they teach you feels counterintuitive. The parachute is connected to your harness by hundreds of small strings. When it opens, you're supposed to look up and see if all the strings are where they're supposed to be. If there is just one string caught over the top of the parachute, they tell you to cut away the entire parachute, start free falling again, then pull the emergency chute. I remember thinking, are you kidding me? There's no way I'm cutting away an almost perfect parachute because one small string out of hundreds of them is out of place. It's good enough, right? Here's the problem. If even one string is over the top, then the parachute will look like it's fine while you're up in the air, but you'll never be able to land it. You won't realise this until you get close to the ground and hit hard. The same is true with our lives. I've tried to fly my faith more than a couple of times with a few strings over the top. Maybe you have too. It was colourful and looked good on the outside. To most people, it even appeared to be flying the way it was supposed to. I wasn't trying to fake it or be a fraud. Most of us aren't. 
While I knew I had a string or two over the top, the idea of cutting away everything and starting all over again sounded excessive to me. It sounded reckless, unsafe. Perhaps it does to you too. It didn't to Jesus though. He said he wanted us to become new creations. His plan for our renewal is that we cut away all the things hanging us up and start all over again each day with him. He talked about cutting away things that entangle us and about pruning more than parachutes. But the concept is the same. When we get the wrong things over the top of our lives, we might look good for a short time, but we won't land our lives well. If you have a string or two over the top of your life, cut it away. Will it be scary? You bet. Do it anyway. That's where we need to trust God, isn't it? In our weakness, he is strong. And, you know, today I just want to wrap up just by giving you time to respond to God. Because I think we all have stuff in our lives, don't we, that we need God to prune. You know, the bad stuff we can identify really easily. But there's some things in our lives that we need to, some of the good things we need to let go. And, you know, I want us to use this song that we sang earlier, New Wine, as our moment of surrendering to God. As our moment of saying, God, take some of that good stuff that I've been hanging on to too long and you, you prune it. You know, in this song we sang um, that we're going to lay down our old fire and carry the new flame. And, you know, that's speaking about laying down those good things that are no longer for this season. And, you know, that might be something you need to do. But, you know, for some of you it might even be about starting the relationship with Jesus. As I read before, he said to abide in him. So I'm going to ask Kirk to come up and uh, lead us through this time of response but I just want you to be open to the spirit of God and just go God I want to abide in you prune what you need to in me amen come on why don't we thank Tracy for a great word very practical so powerful why don't you stand up with me